Not a peaceful spot, Fairburn in West Yorkshire, where the traffic of the A1, the Great North Road, thunders past the village. An unlikely place for a nature reserve, but Fairburn Ings, run by the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, is a conservation miracle. Freddy Bridge Power Station, a prominent landmark, stands cheek by jowl with the flooded Ings and both were created by man's industry. Ings means flooded meadowland in Anglo-Viking, and these live up to their name with a vengeance. About 60 years ago, there was no such place as Fairburn Ings. There was just the village and the surrounding farms, and on one of the farms, one of the fields, had a little soft spot. You know what I mean, just a depression with a few rushes in it. And then it started to grow. And the lady whose father had the farm told me the story of how it grew and grew and grew. And in a few years, there was a swan on it, just one. And her brother was thrilled to bits. He used to go down and feed the swan. Look what's happened since. All that's grown in the last 60 years or so. And the cause, of course, was mining subsidence, mining going on underneath and the land level dropping all the time. So that's how you grow your own ings. The duck walk, where people meet birds on level terms and everybody's happy. Watching wildfowl's good for you and the birds like it as well. The biggest collection of mute swans in Yorkshire lives here and they nest all over the area. Of all the developments of conservation in Yorkshire, this little duck walk has to be one of the greatest. It was created a long time ago, and as soon as it appeared, people came to Fairburn. The geese, the ducks, the swans were there to greet them, and for the first time, really, the public and the wildfowl met face to face. Fairburn Ings has been a green oasis in a very busy landscape. British coal still own the site, and the spoil heaps and slurry lagoons make a slightly dangerous terrain. But it will improve, and in a few years, the muck stack will be just a memory, like the old pits that created it. When the slurry's buried under tons of topsoil, it becomes less toxic. Bob Dickens, a retired teacher, helped create the reserve 30-odd years ago. The land still belongs to the coal board, of course, and uh, I must say that it's taken a long time, but at least they are beginning to tidy it up a bit now. So it's it a greener place than it was? Yeah, all this used to be completely completely grey, you know, and look terrible, but uh, it's gradually coming on. There are a lot of problems, a lot of problems. I mean, it's in an industrial area. It doesn't suffer anything like as much now as it used to do, but um, when I first started coming here, I was teaching on the other side of the valley, you see, and I used to walk down from school in the afternoon, after finished school, walk right around the reserves on the slag heaps, back to Castleford, and then catch a bus back to Leeds, and. Uh, you could guarantee that there'd be two or three shooters and lads collecting eggs and all sorts in those days. So nature uh, conservation's ticking on a bit round here then? Yes, I, I mean, now it is recognised as a bird sanctuary and I think that's very important. <laughs>
And down at the cut, you can guarantee to find Charlie Wynn. How oh, doing? No, Mike. Very quiet. quiet. Yeah. Mm. The wind's changed you now. Uh, oh, well. Yeah. Let's hope for better things <laughs> later, then, eh? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, the wind's gone into the sort of north, you know, and yeah. you want it from the east. It's become from this direction, you know. It seems course. to me, whenever I come to Fairburn, <coughs> you are on this bridge. I mean, are you a fixture, or do no, you go No, no, I, I do go on. Oh, yeah, ah. yeah, occasionally, yeah. But yeah. most days of the year, you must be down here if oh, you're yeah. in the area. Yes, yes. It's yeah. a good spot, this, you know. Yeah. yeah, It's an excellent spot. It's a good spot for the migration, you know. This is what I like to see, the migration. You Stuff know. coming in and out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You've picked a good spot, yeah. certainly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good view, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, know. it's a good all-round view as well. Yeah. You've got a lot of sky. Yeah. But, I mean, mm. when you're standing here, I know you're pretty out on plants and the other animals as well around here, yes. don't you? Yes, yeah. It's a good place to see fish here, you know. You yeah. see a lot of fish. In fact, there's just been a couple of pike down here now on the perch, yeah. I've always been a bit interested in this cut. Was it a canal or something? I mean, it looks like it was deliberately cut. Oh, it was, it was cut, Aye. yeah. It was cut in 1923, uh, 1823. Aye. what yes. for? For gypsum, gypsum and limestone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. it stops there from, from the end yeah. to the Fairburn village. There was a little yeah. railway. Yeah. So the 13-inch gauge railway. And then... Ah, yeah. They tunnelled under the they tunnelled under the village to the quarries on the other yeah. side. Did the did the railway run down this track then? No, no, no. Oh, the it's railway not a wagon road. At the top. No, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's a marvellous old village, and mm. I mean the Ingers themselves have really brought it to life in recent years. I think. Ah, it's it's a marvellous area, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a good flyaway for birds, you know, from from the Humber to the sort of over the Pennines. And I think Morecambe Bay has a big effect on this place. Aye, you know? aye. Mm. Right, well, I'll see you all the time. Right, see mate. ya. Cheers. Hello, Alan. On the left, Ferry Bridge Power Station and the River Air. Turgid and mucky after flowing through Bradford and Leeds. On the right, Fairburn Ings, a clean water haven for wildlife but they both depend one on the other, and the river's the father of the Ings. You'd never believe it, but there wasn't a single tree up here till 1959. This was a bare heap of coal muck, separating the river from the Ings. Volunteers started planting the trees then, and they've now put in over 20,000. And look at them, it's become a lovely little wood. Mainly silver birch, because that grows best. A little bit of oak, a little bit of alder, and even a few conifers. It's a triumph of conservation, is this bit of wood. And another thing about it, of course, it's added to the bird list. It's made woodland birds as well as water birds, one of the features of Fairburnings. Andre Farrer is the RSPB's Assistant Regional Officer for Yorkshire and the North East. Well, your rings are full of birds this morning. They certainly are, yes. It's a smashing time of the year, this, yeah. with the uh, excitement of all the, the migrants arriving now. They're in, in here in force. No, it's tremendous. And the waterfowl, of course, are beginning to nest. Well, some of them are well on. There's, uh, I've seen a couple of broods of, of ducklings now. Mallard have got ducklings out. Yeah, your black-headed gulls sound like a football crowd from back down there. They certainly do, yes. Of course, they're, uh, they're benefiting from work that we've done at the reserve. They're nesting on, uh, on floating islands that have been floated out into the middle of the Ings. These floating islands cater for the outliers of the black-headed gull colony. And ducks like them as well when the plants thicken up. There's a lot to be said for nesting on a raft as long as it stays afloat, a useful addition to any watery reserve. Well, with the A1 at one side and then railway lines, coal heaps and roads surrounding it, it's certainly accessible, isn't it? That's right, and we get over 100,000 people a year visiting the reserve in, in its various parts. Not all of them by any means bird watchers. Um, a lot of them are just coming to look at the ducks in the lay-by. Um, but that really, again, is the first step to developing an interest in, uh, in, in birds and wildlife in general. What is it that brings all these birds to Fairburnings? 
Well, I think first of all, it's the uh, the geographical location of, uh, of Fairburn. The uh, the River Eyre obviously flows up from the, the Humber, um, and it's used very much as a as a route of migration. Birds coming up the east coast turn in up the River Eyre, and carry on flying straight through the Eyre Gap across the Pennines, um, and they're using the the, the Ings very much as a, a first port of call. They've had a long journey, and, and they're stopping off to uh, refresh themselves. And the water's obviously clean enough to support a terrific breeding population anyway. Well, that's it, yes, we're fortunate. I mean, the, the air is certainly not one of the, the cleanest rivers in Britain, and uh, the filtering effect as the, as the water comes through the, uh, um, the, 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 the land between the river and the Ings um, basically filters it out, so the water quality within the Ings itself isn't too bad at all. Yeah, I mean, when we look around like this, we're seeing a terrific variety. I don't know how many species turn up here in a year, or even how many breed, but, uh, you know, it looks sensational. Since the Ings became a reserve, Fairburn's flourished. From farming and pit village to a very smart spot indeed. Heaven for a yuppie bird, there must be a house with a view over the Ings. I wish I could afford one, but this is a booming area. Fairburns had a, a reputation in the past amongst bird watchers that when a rarity turns up, then uh, it's only here for a few hours. It has a yeah. quick refuel and then, it, then it's off. A passing thunderstorm blew these black terns in from the east. Four of them. They dipped and swooped, picking up insects for a while, then floated off when the weather cleared. A typical Fairburnings bird treat. Their nearest nesting place is a Holland and Denmark. Once upon a time, they nested in Yorkshire. This grasshopper warbler was fresh back from Africa, here to stay. Not a common bird, singing away like a fisherman's reel. Education's an important thing on this reserve. It's a living classroom, and the lessons learned out among the Ings can be studied further at the visitor's centre. Here you can learn how the Ings developed, what lives here and why, and hopefully it's a very enjoyable experience, getting close to nature on your own doorstep. The centre's very well used these days and makes a good start for a visit. Warden Robin Horner and I tag along with a party from Fairburn Primary School. I'm glad it's called the Pickup Hide. Yes, that's in uh, memory of Douglas Pickup, the, uh, one of the founder members. Yes, 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 it was a small group that started it off, wasn't it? Bird watching's on the menu and there's plenty to see in front of the new hide. This is where quick young eyes come into their own. Something for everybody to spot, and it's never the same twice. It's a good looking hide, and it's a double decker. You wouldn't see any sign of one sitting on a nest. I'm sure there ought to be a nest in there. See, picking, picking it. Yeah, I can see it. Can you? Oh, good. Ask it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Well, it's great for common birds, Robin, but I suppose there must have been a few unusual things turn up here as well. Yeah, we've had one or two uh, in this particular spot, things like uh, bittern. Ah, we've had yes. a bittern uh, one winter, and it's very good in, at passage times of year. Get things yeah. like wood sandpipers and green sandpipers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've even had a, a temic stint here once. Good Lord, oh, that's pretty good. I mean, it's a new marsh, but it's very attractive. That's right. Well, we've moved away from the bird hide now and we're having a pond dipping session. This is the secret of what Fairburnings is all about. Healthy, clean water with a lot of life in it. What are we expecting, Robin? Oh, we should get quite a few things here. I think the children have already caught a lot of tadpoles. Good. They're in fact, uh, they're not actually frogs, they're toads. Uh -huh. So you could actually call them toad poles, I suppose, but they are actually still called tadpoles. Yeah, there's all sorts of things keep popping up to the surface out there. That's right, I think they've, uh, they've caught quite a good, good specimen over here, which is a water scorpion. Oh, which is that's good, a isn't star it? catcher today. Yes, yeah. yeah. I know it looks like a scorpion, but it can't hurt you. Uses its nippers to grab tadpoles, and that little thing at the back to breathe through, that's its air tube. 
It's a rich pond, is this, isn't it? It's very good. In fact, yeah. you can find this all over Fairburn. Mm. This is what the this is what the ducks come to feed on. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's a lovely diving beetle. I don't know the name of that one, but I think it's called Agabus. Which one's that? I don't know if you've got an anti-Agabus. There you are, look. Oh, that's yeah, a that's a big one. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good size beetle. See that there? He's big, isn't he? That's the biggest beetle yet. Yeah. Come on. Do Everyone better. got a bigger beetle? Ooh. Wait, look what we caught here. Look at this. This is a great diving beetle. No, this is not the same as the one that was caught on the other side. That was a smaller beetle. This one's actually called the great diving beetle because it's so big. Look at the size of it. See how it catches a bubble on its end? Yeah. That's so that it can breathe underwater. Come here. It's very active, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's a beauty, isn't it? It's lovely, that, isn't it? Mm. That feeds on other tadpoles and yeah. things, huh? That is the biggest beetle we're likely to get round here in yeah. fresh water. Again, I mean, it feeds on tadpoles and dab chicks will feed on it and herons and things, so yeah, part of the food chain, isn't it? Off they go. More Fairburnings fans for Robin Horner's work. Education's an RSPB priority these days. I think it's becoming even more of an important mm -hmm. area. After all, the uh, young generation of today Aye. is going to be the the planners and the such forth of, of tomorrow. And if we can only just, you know, give some idea of the importance of wildlife mm. and what occurs on reserves, uh, those little seeds can perhaps just last mm. uh, into the future. Uh, we can get up to 10 schools uh, a week. 10 and schools a week? That's right, yeah. yeah. One in the morning, one in an afternoon. Oh. That's right, that's quite a lot of school children. Continuous performance, eh? That's right. And you've got a teacher on the job as well. Too. That's right, yeah. yeah. He um, basically runs an uh, yeah. actual programme. Yeah, I point. mean, it's the kind of day out they'll remember. That's isn't right. It? Yeah, and with any look, that's your future bird watchers. That's right. And, and future... your future society members, hopefully. Yes, and planners and people like that, all who are going to be yeah. uh, affecting the, the shape of the countryside around. Well, it's a great PR job, it certainly is. The wirescape of electricity lines at the top end of Fairburnings doesn't bother the nesting swans, but they are a hazard to birds in flight. Just up the road, Newings are developing at Allerton Bywater, right in the heart of the village. Twenty years ago, you could walk across this field. Now it's a young Ings, but still popular with people as a recreation area and attractive to wildlife. Swans have nested here for two years now. And Canada geese have just moved in. The horses that still graze here are full of beans. The little one more than holds its own. New Ings in the making, just past the damp patch stage, but turning into a marsh already. The water plants soon grab hold, then the insects and birds follow on. Mickletown Ings are still growing as well. Not long since it was a field with a beck in it. Now it's an important water bird nesting spot. But not everybody's happy about that. Farmer Richard Firth has seen his arable land shrink in the wash. The Ings are now a site of scientific interest and are protected. When did the Ings start to form on here? Oh, about 14 years since, I should think. 14? Yeah. And what was it like then? Well, it was just a small uh, beck that run through, and then it gradually sunk and it couldn't get away. It just sunk down. Aye, and, and you see it now. Up with water. Yeah. 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 And was it due entirely then to the subsidence oh, from yes. coal mines? Yes, yeah. from Savile. Ah, from Mine. Savile Pit, yeah. which is now gone, of course. Yes, I'm close that now. Where cattle graze, birds now crop the plants. These coots enjoy a good nibble. How many acres did it actually affect, do you know? Well, I don't know, but there's 32 acres down here. Yeah. All together. So rough, roughly, I think, there'll be about 10 acres. Just shows how things change around here, though. Oh, it is. Have you lived here all your life? Yeah, born here. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. You'll have seen it all happen then. I well, remember when we used to jump over at Beck, you know, and it were a Beck. Then when it subsided, like, it couldn't get away. Yeah. So it just 
all run back and form yeah. ten acres of new wings. Yeah. The old spoil heap of the now defunct Savile coal mine makes a good viewpoint. Where the river air and the canal join, the latest phase of industrial development takes place. Open cast coal mining. Barges load coal here, very close to the mining sites, and take advantage of the air gaps water transport routes. This coal, which lies just below the surface, is a booming trade. It's no distance from here to the power stations downstream, and they gobble it up. But in March this year, the river air burst its banks and millions of gallons of water poured into the vast St. Aidan's mine, making a lake 200 feet deep. Even as the water was pouring in, a couple of swans flew in to take up residence. The accidental creation of what was fast becoming the daddy of Orlings attracted thousands of sightseers and bird watchers. But there are still two million tons of coal down there, worth 80 million pounds. British coal would like to get it out, but diverting the river air and the canal will take an act of parliament. They're campaigning for support for the scheme, and the benefits for the area promised would include housing, a marina, and a new conservation area like the one at Swillington, just to the west. Even while British coal were repairing the breach and recovering their giant-sized machinery, a rare bird, a red-footed falcon, perched on the jib of one of these massive cranes. Here you have a real panorama of the Ings, from Mickletown just below us, to Allerton Bywater with its pit, onwards to Fairburn, and then on the horizon, Ferry Bridge, where we started. This is a national class wetland by anybody's reckoning. One thing's for sure, Tommy Goodwin, a regular, Charlie Wynn, Mr. Fairburn Ings, and Bob Dickens will carry on birding. Great Crested Grebe is daily fair to them. For tomorrow's bird watchers as well, earning their wings on the ings. Gadwall, a rare nesting bird, and a Fairburn regular now. And for me, a real treat, an American ring neck duck. A real live twitch. Bird of the day, whoopee!